Welcome. This video is the third in a series of tutorials about writing a game in Unity. In this video we will set up the camera movements. Project files are in the description. The tutorial is for beginners. What are the methods to move the camera? A quick one is to set the camera as child of the player. This is common for first-person shooters and requires no code. Let's try it. As you can see the movements are a little bit difficult to follow. Let's try a different approach. Let's make the camera follow the player. How can we do this? Let's introduce the concept of lerping. Lerping is a mathematical operation used to interpolate between two values. For example, you can have a starting position and an end position, and you can calculate with lerp any position in between. The formula is just having a percentage of the lerp applied to one value and the opposite percentage applied to the other value. You can also lerp compound values, like vectors or rotations. Lerp can be used if you want to slowly change from one value to another. In this case you can simply use delta time as changed value, and assign the lerp value to the original value. Here's some examples. If our values are the camera and the player positions, we can interpolate between the two, and assign the new position to the camera. Keep in mind we have to always keep the camera z-axis on the front, or we will not see the player. Let's see the result. By doing the lerping with delta time, the camera is smoothly following the player position. That is better, but still not good. First, let's have the camera never go below the zero vertical coordinate. We can just clamp the vertical value with an if. Let's see the result. Better again. What if the speed is really high? Can we change the zoom? We can try to zoom in and out according to the speed of the player. Remember, the speed is the magnitude of the velocity vector. We will start with the original zoom that is 5, and have it changing of about 25% of the speed. We are using a 2D camera for this project. 2D cameras are defined as orthographic, they will not show perspective of the objects. Orthographic cameras are excellent for 2D and isometric games. The view size of the 2D camera is called orthographic size. This number defines how big the window of the camera is. In 2D this is equivalent to a zoom effect on the screen. We can access this value directly from the camera object. Smaller values will make the camera window to be smaller. As we learned before, we can lerp the new zoom value with the previous one to smooth the effect. Let's test. Now the camera looks good when the player is fast. Let's add another feature. We will not start moving while the player is before half of the screen, and we will also not move the camera if the residual velocity is small. How can we find if the player is before or after the center of the screen? The camera itself gives us some functions to find the relative position of objects according to the camera. Let's speak about coordinate systems. The most common is the world space. This is a 3D coordinate system X, Y, and Z, where all objects are placed. All your game objects will have a transform with a position in this system of coordinates. Then you have the screen space. Imagine your monitor. It will have a certain resolution. 1920 by 1080 or maybe 2K or even 4K. Or maybe you are on a mobile and the height is larger than the width. If you consider the very bottom left pixel of your screen to be in position 00, then you will have your top right pixel to be in the position screen width screen height. This system of coordinates is called screen space, and it is used for 2D games and UI, especially pixel art games. Then we have the viewport space. It is similar to the screen space, but it is resolution independent. Bottom left is 00 and top right is 11. The middle of the view is 0.50.5. We can transform one coordinate point to another via the camera. We can grab the viewport coordinates by calling the world to view port point from the camera and passing the player position to it. Now we can check if we are before the middle or very close to the top. In that case, we will not update the camera position. 
We also check if the horizontal velocity of the player is not too small before moving the camera. This will make the player slide a little bit off position when its speed is close to zero. Let's have a look. Camera starts moving when the player goes over the center. Now the camera stops because the player is too slow. The camera movement now is more natural. What can be better still? We do not want the camera to look below the very bottom of the play area. We see the default blue background in case the zoom shows too much around. How can we solve it? It is another simple maths problem. Let's check the Unity editor with the camera. Let's grab the minimal height the camera should have when the zoom is at minimum. 5 is the minimum zoom. And zoom back the camera, and find the new minimum height for it. Now we have two points. 5, 0, and 10, 5. These two points define a line we can use to calculate the minimum height of the camera for any zoom level. The formula for the line is very easy. Let's rewrite the code with the new changes. First we calculate the new position of the camera. Then we calculate the zoom based on the speed of the player. And we clamp it to make the changes smooth. We can use the previous formula to stop the camera going off the screen. We check if the player is in the safe zone, that is the left part of the screen and inside the visible vertical space. In that case we do not move the camera horizontally. We check if the player's horizontal velocity is too small. In such cases we do not move the camera horizontally either. And finally we assign the new position to the camera. Let's have a look at the final result. That's it for this third tutorial. What did we do in this video? We learned about lerping two values. We learned about how to move and zoom the camera using some code. Of course you can use more complex components to move the camera, like Cinemachine. But for our game this is more than enough. In the next video we will start to generate some backgrounds. Check our Discord site for help in game development. Ciao. See you next time.